All right, looks like it's gonna work. We have some more people coming in. Probably not going to be a huge crowd tonight uh, just with Thanksgiving um, coming up tomorrow. So uh, let me know. Um, thanks, Brenda, for verifying the audio. Appreciate that. And looks like we are live <clears throat> over on YouTube, so we can get started. Okay, so tonight I'm going to be talking about um, toxins and how to, I'm going to try to make this as practical as I possibly can so that you have some good advice to, to avoid toxins. Um, now, most of this is based on a book. I'm going to show you the title of the book, and it's called Non-Toxic. Hold on. There we go. Non-Toxic, Guide to Living Healthy in a Chemical World by Dr. Ali Cohen. And <clears throat> I've covered toxins a few times. One of the reasons I like this particular book, and really any book um, in terms of health, is because it allows you to see things through the lens of of another author. Um, <clears throat> and that always yields some interesting insights. Now, um, there have been some other lectures that I've given over the past. Let me uh, share my screen and we'll just jump right into it. Uh, one of the reasons I like this particular book is because of the emphasis on really you taking control of the situation. Um, as I've said, my goal for you is to become your own authority in health. And as a result, really, you need to rely on yourself. And one of the things she goes through in the book is really just how poor the regulation is when it comes to these sorts of things. Um, so you really need to become your own authority. Now, uh, the, the book, again, is called Non-Toxic Guide to Living, Hel Living Healthy in a Chemical World. And we're going to go through that book. But for other resources that I've spoken about in the past, uh, episode two, we did uh, one on environmental toxins and whether it's a big deal. Episode 22 was uh, understanding environmental toxins. Episode uh, 46, we spoke specifically about heavy metals. Um, and there's a book called uh, The Toxin Solution by uh, Dr. Joe Pizzorno um, that I would also recommend if you're interested. So let's just jump right into it. Um, now, Dr. Cohen is actually a rheumatologist who who starts out the book really talking about, unfortunately, um, one of her dogs dying from, from, be, from, from getting toxins. Um, but let's just jump right into the topics. I'm not really going to go through the book as just focusing on really the things that you need to know about. So we're going to start with an overview. Then we'll talk a little bit about the immune system as well as um, the endocrine system what parents need to know, where these chemicals are in terms of food, water, air, personal care products, home furnishing, is radiation an issue? And then we'll talk about scientifically studied detoxification. Now, one of the things I wanna focus you from the very, very beginning, I've, I've already spoken about, one is you cannot rely on the government to, to be able to help you with this. You'll see that there've only been a few chemicals that have actually been banned, but there are thousands and thousands of chemicals that are, are toxic, that are in our environment. And the US compared to Europe, it's like less than 1% of, of chemicals that are banned in, in Europe are, are banned here. Literally, it's, it's, that, it's that small. So you really have to be your own authority when it comes to living in this chemical world. And we're gonna go through an overview now to really get a better, uh, clear, clearer understanding of what's going on. So in the last 100 years, there have been 90,000 new chemicals, new chemicals that have essentially been never seen before. Now, when we were, you know, thousands of years ago, we, there were toxins in the environment. Um, there are toxins in the environment, plant toxins, uh, you know, things from burning things, all kinds of different things. But we were we evolved to be able to handle these sorts of things. Unfortunately, since the Industrial Revolution, there have been literally tens of thousands, 90,000 new chemicals in the last 100 years. And not all of these can, can be studied. So we need to rely a little bit 
on some of the medical literature that's coming out, but also I think that it's not so important that you understand each and every one of the chemicals as much as it's important for you to understand how to live a life that is as clean and healthy as possible, which minimizes your exposure. So while I'll cover a few of them, I covered a fair number of them in my other talks. So therefore I'm gonna to try to focus on really focusing in on some of the recommendations that Dr. Cohen makes in her book, which I thought were, were fabulous. And I really believe you should get the book. Um, and the reason I, I recommend the book first and foremost is because she has a lot of home remedies, um, home cleaning products, you know, using things like white vinegar and, and borax and, and these sorts of things that really bring us back to probably a time many of you can, under, can remember, maybe you had a, a grandmother um, or a great grandmother who had her own sort of cleaning chemicals, because you'll find that a fair number of the cleaning chemicals, cleaning products out there really have an enormous amount of toxic chemicals in them. And therefore it, these sort of home remedies recipes, all these sorts of things are, are great. And I recommend that you get the book for that. Uh, and I think it's important to support authors, uh, especially authors that are trying to make a difference in terms of improving people's overall health. So getting back to this, uh, each year, there are a thousand new chemicals put to use. And there are probably a thousand endocrine disrupting chemicals. These are chemicals that simulate hormones in your body. Uh, we'll go through a few of those so that you can understand just how sort of crazy it is that these chemicals uh, are out there. But the fact is that they can interfere with your endocrine system, which is, of course, the system that is involved in chemical messengers, hormones that are, are circulating in your body. How many have been banned in the U.S.? Five, uh, which is, again, a fraction, a fraction of a fraction of the chemicals that have been banned in the United States, that in, in Europe. And BPA, <clears throat> BPA is probably the most, the best example of sort of how and why the, the US is probably not the best in terms of, of regulation. Uh, so BPA, which probably many of you, if you've been all my classes uh, are familiar with, uh, is something that's in the lining of cans. Uh, it's also found on thermal receipts. So when you get a receipt, it's also on thermal, thermal receipts. We'll talk a little bit about that. And I've mentioned it several times that, that it is a significant exposure, unfortunately, to when you go to the grocery store and they give you those receipts, you know, I, I know, I know it's going to sound crazy, but I have them put the receipt in you know, either I don't want to really particularly touch it, certainly taking it and crinkling it. I know this sounds nuts, but unfortunately there is a exposure that happens when you, when you do that. Um, it's made from petroleum. And when they sort of came up with this, it mimicked the effects of estrogen. So it was for a period of time considered for use as a fertility drug, but chemists got a hold of it. And they found that when they linked the molecules together, it actually made a clear, hard, shatterproof plastic. Um, and then, you know, once they were able to develop that, they realized that it probably had other uses. So with modification, it became the resin the, that, that, bond, that is on the, the inside of cans, um, a lot of cans, and also lines thermal paper, as I said. And unfortunately, it was sort of grandfathered into the U.S. food and, and packaging without a requirement for testing because it had been around for a fair amount of time and there wasn't um, you know, any sudden or dramatic uh, toxic effect. And this is so many years ago that the notion of, of understanding what endocrine disrupting chemicals can do wasn't, wasn't really clear. Of course, now there are over 8,000 published studies reporting the health consequences of, of this BPA. And in France, it's banned completely. And in the EU, it's listed as, quote, a presumed human carcinogen and reproductive toxin. The unfortunate thing is that it turns out that BPA has become some, somewhat popular in terms of companies saying that they are removing BPA from their uh, cans and from their plastics and such. Uh, unfortunately, what's happened is, and this is sort of another one of those things that is very difficult in the United States to really handle, 
is that they've come up with substitutes. Instead of BPA, it's BPB, BPF, BPS, et cetera. And all these are probably just as bad as the other. So a company can say that their can is BPA-free when in fact it is BPA-free, but is often substituted with another one of these chemicals like BPB or BPS, and these are just as bad. So it's very difficult, unfortunately, for you to, to figure out if a can is has this sort of lining. Now, acidic, very acidic, um, <clears throat> very acidic type things like, like tomatoes almost always have some sort of lining in them. So as, so for me, I try to get, if I'm doing, you know, trying to, I don't buy canned tomatoes um, unless I can verify that there is no, no lining um, in the can. Uh, that is that has one of these things. So what do you do? You deal with glass. And of course, we'll be speaking uh, about those alternatives as we go through tonight's, tonight's episode. So what is it? So essentially, we've come to this idea, this understanding that unfortunately, you are not going to be able to rely 100% definitively, you will not be able to rely on packaging labels, um, on government regulations for you to determine what is toxic. You have to become your own authority. And ultimately, um, that's, that's sort of the big message of, of this book. Now we have things that af affect our resilience, our resilience to be able to handle the toxins that, we're, that we are exposed to because we're not all sick uh, from toxins. So you can create a situation in your life that builds up the tolerance and of course, we've spoken about that every week. All the things that you can do to improve your overall health is, is always going to help also improve the ability of your body to detoxify. So some of us have genetics that make it a little bit more difficult for us to, um, to detoxify, but there's also lifestyle like diet, exercise, sleep, stress. We'll go through all those near the end to really be able to boost our resilience. And then of course, taking care of our environment, which is going to be very, very important. There are many resources that I'm going to be repeating over and over again. Uh, I happen to love the um, em environmental working group. Um, sometimes they, they make political statements, unfortunately, but, um, but nonetheless, they are an incredible resource and I'll be mentioning them many times. There's a healthy child, healthy world, moms across America, these organizations. And ultimately you, you have to become your own authority. Use your nose. If something smells chemically, that's probably something that's an issue. Less is more, right? Um, in other words, you, you'll understand that very, very shortly when we go into how do we reduce the, the toxic products uh, without having an inconvenience to our life? We're able to do that. And we should start thinking about how do we simplify? Just how do you simplify your life? How do you simplify the number of personal care products and packaged foods uh, to get back to a situation. How do you store your foods? Getting back to a situation that is more natural. Unfortunately, you, it's ongoing and you shouldn't, you know, tomorrow just throw everything out that you think is toxic. This is always going to be an ongoing type of thing. And when you are in touch with, or visiting these, these organizations, their websites, you really can learn a lot and you know, you just as time goes by, think of it as a way to simplify your life um, by by getting rid of some of these chemicals that, as you now know, never existed in in human history, and now in the last hundred years, we're just bathed in this stuff. So much so that when you check breast milk, it's it's often loaded with toxins. I, I often mention the 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 lecture that I was at 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 a um, functional medicine conference and they were going through the toxins that were in breast milk. Unfortunately, with breast milk, uh, it takes out fat soluble because there's fat in the milk. It's, it's very effective uh, um, almost as, a, as at pulling out these fat uh, soluble toxins. And therefore uh, you see a fair amount of them in someone who's had significant exposures, but being in the United States or, or probably anywhere, unfortunately, what's happening is, is that there, as an example, in the breast milk, there's a fair amount of these toxins. And, you know, someone asked in the audience, well, what do you do? Do you recommend that people don't breastfeed? And of course, the answer was, 
No, I mean, because of course, breast milk is, is the best, best that, you know, the best thing that you can do for your child. But the person who was, was speaking said that, you know, if you can prepare, of course, you know, not everyone can prepare for, for an upcoming pregnancy, but for people who can, there are ways of, of course, starting to live a much healthier life to be able to get to a situation where your toxin load that's in your body is, is better. So unfortunately in the United States, chemicals that are considered safe to use, they're essentially considered safe to use until there's clear evidence that they are causing harm. Think about that. Uh, you can basically come out with a chemical that you know, might be used in lining of something or in a personal care product. And you, know, you apply for generally recognized as, as safe and you can get that without there being all that much work and data to support its, it being generalized, generally recognized as safe. And then it's up to other people to show clear evidence that there is harm. So because of, of that, you're in a situation here in the United States that makes you need to become the, the person that's going to make decisions for yourself and for your family. And of course, that's been my theme for the last 82 or 83 weeks, which is ultimately that you really need to, um, to learn this stuff for yourself. So, and you can do that because you're smart and, uh, and I'm trying to, uh, to teach you as, as much as I can. So what, what are these chemicals doing? Well, they can work through many different ways. They can work through your endocrine system and the endocrine system, as I mentioned, it's your hormone system. And the problem is, is that the body responds to doses of these in various ways. It used to be that you would think that the, the, the dose makes the toxin. In other words, the more of a dose, the more of the toxin, the worse you get, like with the graph. Unfortunately, um, we spoke about this a few weeks ago, where we talked about the hormetic effect. Sometimes lower doses and higher dose, lower doses can have a different effect than higher doses. In other words, you can have a situation where a lower dose of something can potentially have more of an effect, especially when we're talking about the endocrine system. Example of that is tamoxifen, which is, which is a, a, a breast cancer medicine. At low doses, it stimulates breast cancer. And at high doses, it blocks the ability uh, of estrogen to promote breast cancer. So um, these, and this is a hormonal medicine. So some of these, these hormonal um, endocrine disrupting chemicals, unfortunately, just because you're getting a low dose does not necessarily mean that you are not going to respond in some way. And unfortunately, I, I probably should have mentioned this in the beginning. Unfortunately, you know, conventional environmental medicine is not really something that's taught in medical school. And unfortunately, when you're in medical school, you get through medical school and you go through your residency. Unfortunately, if you hear something that you weren't taught in medical school, this is not me, of course, but unfortunately, the majority of doctors, if, if it wasn't taught to them in medical school, they often just think it doesn't exist uh, and that it's probably being made up or, uh, and this is the sad, sad fact. In fact, I'll just give you one personal example. I, I was in a dermatology, um, I, my, my postgraduate after medical school, I did a residency in, in dermatology. So, and I still on, uh, I still practice um, some dermatology and I was in a dermatology forum and we were talking about personal care, uh, specifically sun, sunscreens and toxicity. And I mentioned a few things. We'll talk about that in, in just a bit. And it, I completely uncontroversial things that have been published in, in um, toxic toxin journals, you know, environmental medicine journals for years, completely uncontroversial. And you wouldn't believe how, how I was attacked. In, in, the, in the forum for, um, you know, just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, so again, if you haven't been taught, doctors who haven't been taught, you know, unfortunately it takes a long time for these things to filter down into the clinic. You know, there've often been people who said that, you know, it could take 10 to 15 years 
for certain things once they're published to, to be filtered down to the interaction you have between you and your doctor. Now, which ultimately, of course, reinforces everything I've said before, which is that you need to be ahead of your doctor in, in many different things when it comes to preventative medicine and, and optimizing your health. In fact, I truly believe, and of course, I've said this over and over again, that you need to be, you know, as I said, your own authority, but ultimately that you're, you, you are responsible for your overall health. You are the person that needs to learn what it takes to, to put yourself in a situation that optimizes the human body's miraculous ability to, to heal itself and to maintain itself. Um, and when you can do that, and of course, the chances of you needing a doctor are, are a lot less. Of course, I, I still practice medicine, so I, I think there's a role for us, of course, uh, but you need to do uh, most of the work to preserve your health. And that's always going to be the case. It's always been the case. You read all the ancient writers, ancient doctors, they all mentioned how preventative medicine was, was always you know, the, the best thing that you could do. And that a lot of that had to do with the patient understanding how lifestyle and thinking and nutrition and all that uh, played a role. Unfortunately, um, getting back to the endocrine disrupting chemicals, these effects can last generations uh, because you know, if you're exposed um, in utero, you know, if, you're, if you are carrying a baby, um, unfortunately that can affect that generation. Um, and unfortunately it can affect the generation after that because the, whole, the reproductive organs you know, in a fetus are going to be formed in utero. Uh, and so if there are damaging effects happening there, it can go to the next generation. And there have been also other studies to show that just environmental changes, the, the most common one that's cited is in, in Denmark during World War II, there was um, severe starvation. And, the, and essentially the effects of that can be seen in in multiple generations. So effects that might be um, different than toxins, but the point is, is that things that happen to you can last many, many generations. Um, in the case of, the, of Denmark, those, those people had a much higher, the, to the second and third generations had, had a more of a risk for, um, for obesity, um, just, uh, just as an FYI. Uh, there are some data to show that there might be higher rates of autoimmune disease. We spoke about BPA, and it's been shown that in addition to its um, endocrine effects can also affect immune pathways as well. But ultimately, there are things that you can do to protect yourself. Uh, folate, which, which is found in leafy green vegetables, which you should be eating, obviously, a good amount of, uh, mitigates the effects of BPA. Omega-3 also offsets um, various toxins. Uh, you'll learn a little bit later about how uh, there is something called perchlorate, which is found in rocket fuel and also found in just about every human body in the United States can, can affect your thyroid and can prevent your thyroid from assimilating iodine. So, and unfortunately, iodine is really not, it, you know, iodine, salt used to be iodized and now people are using and the, you know, people are using lots of salts that don't have iodine in them. Um, and so unfortunately, I, the amount of iodine people are getting these days is not what it was uh, actually. So I recommend that people get um, an iodine or their multivitamin should have iodine in it, like 150 micrograms. But we'll talk about all this. Some of these things are going to repeat because I want to hammer them home so that you remember them. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Quercetin, which is found in, uh, in, in the skin of some vegetables and cruciferous vegetables, which I mention all the time and should be 50% uh, of the leafy greens that you get. You should be eating a big bowl of leafy greens every single day and half of those should be cruciferous. So kale, collards, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, um, Cauli, uh, I said cauliflower, mustard greens. Uh, you can Google it and there's a whole list of them. And um, half your vegetables should, should be from that. 
And all these can protect you from, from these toxins, even though the toxins are brand new and our bodies have never seen them, getting all these other things right is really going to make a huge difference. So get your diet right. So let's jump now into, we, we now understand that there are endocrine effects to these toxins, there's immune effects, and there's effects epigenetically, meaning things that are happening, toxins that are affecting the genetic expression, essentially is what that means. So what about, what do parents need to know? And this is essentially going to cover a fair number of just general ideas and we go through and we go through the tips. So babies, of course, the, the key takeaway <coughs> is go silicone. There are lots of silicone based um, things for, for babies food these days. And quite frankly, the go silicone um, um, suggestion should go for you as well. When it comes to looking for, uh, you can get the, there's lots of, of cooking um, equipment that has silicone in it. Um, it withstands to high heat. Um, they have silicone like, I saw an advertisement just a couple of days ago that I'll probably buy, which is a silicone baggie. Um, and, you know, it looks like, it's, it looks like uh, a container and then you can squeeze it and seal it like a, like a baggie um, and it's made of silicone. Um, be cautious with plastic toys. These have uh, phthalates in them, which are particularly harmful when exposed during pregnancy. A lot of plastic toys, unfortunately, have it. Um, and it has, it's associated with, uh, with, with hormone disruption, unfortunately. And um, essentially, just you really have to be careful with these plastic toys. Not just for you, but for your dogs as well. When it comes to kids, they unfortunately have a much greater exposure. They're near the ground with dust, carpets, and vinyl flooring. And vinyl flooring, as an example, actually gives off gas, it gives off formaldehyde, uh, unfortunately. So you think of it as this inert chemical, but unfortunately, you know, over the years, it does, does off gas um, some formaldehyde-like like products. Uh, kids these days, unfortunately, lack a variety in their diet. I, how many times all of you I know have seen, have gone to restaurants where they have that kid's meal, which drives me completely insane. Uh, where the kids are just eating uh, pasta, pasta with butter, or mostly it's chicken fingers. Uh, it's just horrendous, absolutely horrendous, the lack of variety in, in diet. Um, I mean, when we, when was there ever, I don't think I, we had, did we, I'm just thinking, you know, I, I'm 50. I, I, I don't think when I was a kid, we had um, a children's meal at the restaurant. Uh, I ate what everyone else ate. Um, I don't, I don't, these kids who are not able to eat anything but chicken fingers, it's really horrific for their overall health. Um, anyway, I digress. And also it's more toxic to them because they're not fully formed. You know, at least we're fully formed as an adults. We don't have any organ systems that are continuing to, to, to develop in terms of our, you know, uh, and therefore we're not as, you know, we're a little bit more resistant. Kids are not that way. And therefore it's so important to get things right. Uh, especially when it comes to, to these, these things that we discussed in teens, when they, um, puberty, you know, we're seeing girls with, who are starting their period in, in, in when they're seven or eight in some communities, some people think it's related to a personal care products, especially synthetic hair products. I've heard various, various different different, you know, um, ideas about why this is, uh, one was what somebody said that maybe it's, you know, excessive, uh, you know, conventional dairy products. Anyway, the, the point is it's almost certainly related to something environmental. Um, and it's important that during puberty kids are doing things as clean as possible. Uh, so what are some tips? Tips are, to change, change your cookware, get rid of uh, nonstick cookware. I know nonstick cookware is so much easier to use, especially if you're making eggs and things like that. But there are, there's all kinds of new, um, you know, old fashioned things like uh, cast iron, cast iron or some ceramics are certainly going to be better than like the Teflon coated 
uh, non sticks. Clean often, you know, the thing is a lot of the dust around your home can, can actually have a fair amount of toxins built into it. Reduce your personal care products. Take a look in your, sh in your shelf, in your bathroom and see what's in there. What do you use on a regular day? And what can you substitute with a natural alternative? Uh, check ewg.org. Uh, that's probably the third time I've mentioned it. ewg.org has a skin section, a personal care product section. And you can see what's in some of these products. Now, um, just make it as clean as you possibly can. Uh, use old fashioned home cleaning agents like white vinegar, uh, sea salt can be used as an abrasive, uh, lemon juice, essential oils. And I do recommend you buy the book just to get uh, all the recipes that she has for these home cleaning agents. Um, I'm, I'm always a fan of doing some of these things on your own. There are certainly if you go to EWG, look, there's a cleaning products section that has products that, you know, use just healthy, healthy ingredients. Um, you know, the, the um, pure Castile soap is used in a lot of the, the recipes that she has for home cleaning agents that you can get from uh, that company, um, Bronner's. Uh, that's good to have around the house. Uh, but you know, again, white vinegar, baking soda, sea salt, lemon juice, essential oils, all these things can be used in many, many different ways to, to, clean, to clean the house. Um, be cautious with air fresheners, even candle air fresheners um, have chemicals in them that unfortunately are probably not great for you. Some of which include those phthalates that I spoke about. And you know, radiation, well, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit later and meaning electromagnetic radiation from things like cell phones. We'll talk about what kind of risk there is um, later on that, if there is. So where are these chemicals? They're of course in food, they're in water, they're in air, personal care products, home furnishings. Uh, let's just jump right into some of these things. And again, we're focusing more on practical suggestions here. So uh, we spoke a little bit about perchlorate, uh, it's allowed in food and food packaging. Uh, it's used to reduce the buildup of static charge. So for example, in those big mills where they have gr dry grains, I guess it's, it, it's put there so that there's no sparks and things like that, but it affects the thyroid's ability to use iodine. So that means since we're all exposed to this, that thyroid, that iodine is important. And of course it's even more important, as I said already, because a lot of us aren't getting the iodine from the iodized salt that we used to use. So it's very important, I believe. Uh, we spoke about this in the micronutrient lecture um, at length. I forget what, what we, that was in like the 30s, week 30 or something like that. You can find those on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> we spoke about iodine. So yeah, you definitely want a multivitamin um, that has, has like 100, 150 micrograms in it. Um, glyphosate, we've all heard of that. Roundup um, has, I, I don't, I'm not even going to discuss it because it's been in the news so much. Uh, so obviously you, you want to get organic as, po as, as much as you possibly can. Um, Perfluoroalkyls, al uh, non, non-stick pans, water repellent fabrics, foam, pizza boxes, um, stain, anything that's sort of stain resistant. Unfortunately, baby clothes and products are, have these in them. So of course there are resources for you to be able to find uh, baby clothes. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking on one thing here. Yeah, okay. There's, um, of course there are all those resources that I spoke about, uh, EWG, as well as uh, Moms Across America, these sorts of organizations can, can help you with, with finding um, these sorts of things. Unfortunately, again, you know, these things you think, wow, okay, cool. It's stain resistant and flame retardant and, you know, wrinkle free and these sorts of things. They do that through chemicals. It's not, it's not something that they've done to the, the there's not something um, intrinsic to the fabric that's making it stain resistant. They have to put a chemical in there and that chemical, unfortunately, is not healthy for you. So that's something that you should be aware of. So obviously organic is going to be better. And don't listen to the studies that say, oh, organic, you know, you shouldn't, you don't need to buy organic and this sort of thing. You, the key here is 
look, if, if I show, you know, they're going to try to do a study that's going to show like no improved health or whatever the case is, you want to, it makes sense for us to foster a situation where, where farmers are incentivized to make organic uh, produce so that we're not spewing out pesticides like crazy. You should be aware, however, that unfortunately you don't know the path that vegetables take from the farm to the store, which could, uh, as I, I've been told, mean that it gets put up against sometimes non-organics. And so you can get some pesticide exposure. Uh, so you should be aware of that. But when it comes to GMOs, genetically modified, the, the issue is, is that while there are some genetic modified uh, plants that were bred to have better nutritional profiles, all which is somewhat up for, for debate. Most of the GMOs are GMOs so that they can handle more pesticides. So if you're eating GMOs, forget about the genetic modification. You know, you can go crazy with all the arguments about playing God and affecting the, you know, you're going to create some sort of uh, Franken, Franken food. I, you don't even need to think about that. What you need to think about is that most of these are genetically modified so that they don't get killed by the pesticide, which means that you can get more, you can put more pesticides on and not kill the plant. So that means you're getting more pesticide exposure. So forget about it. Forget about the other issues. The, those other issues will sort themselves out. Do you want more pes pesticide exposure or not? That's the question, at least for me personally. Okay, now, so what are some suggestions? Because we're trying to make this as, as practical as possible. So get rid of plastic as much as you can. Again, I'm not suggesting anyone go into their uh, kitchen after this and throw away all your Tupperware and all your plastic wrap Again, this is something that is you're creating a healthy lifestyle. So you just, this is a slow process, but be aware that you, if you put, you know, you get, you get, um, you get these plastic containers and they're nice and clear when you get them. And then, you know, you put them in the microwave and you put them in the dishwasher and what happens? They get cloudy. That's because they're, they're breaking down. Um, so anything like acidic foods, like tomatoes or citrus, uh, fatty foods, unfortunately, because the, the fat can sort of dissolve some of, some of the toxin uh, and, and absorb, uh, dissolve it and absorb it. Uh, those plastic bags, since, it's, since Thanksgiving is tomorrow, I know we've used them in my family years, years ago where you put the, 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 tur the turkey in sort of the oven bag and, you know, it sort of cooks in, in the, pla the plastic. Um, Unfortunately, the, none of those things are, are going to be healthy for you. When you look at the bottom of a water bottle um, or any plastic container, there's a the very, very bottom, trying to just scan my environment to see if I have any sort of plastic anything. But um, when you look at the very, very bottom, there's a number with like little arrows around it. It's the recycle numbers. And you want to get the numbers one, two, four, and five and stay away from three, six, and seven. Um, and there was a little mnemonic, like five, four, let me think what, I forget what she had. There, I should have copied it down. A way to remember five, four, two, one. Um, can't remember what it is, unfortunately. Um, but five, four, two, one, uh, Use uh, wax paper or glass or stainless steel and not plastic, something that I'm going to switch to. My mother always preferred wax paper. So my mom, I guess, knows best in, in that regard. Uh, so one of the things I am I'm going to do is actually start using wax paper uh, a lot more than, than plastic wrap. And I've mentioned already, BPA-free does not mean it doesn't have the other, the other bisphenol chemicals in it. So you really do need to be aware of that and, and ask your favorite company, you know, you can call them on the phone. They need to tell you these things. If there are BPA derivatives uh, lining the cans that, that they're using. Washing produce, even if it's organic, you should be washing the produce. I mean, you don't know whose hands touched it. 
you know, what kind of thing it was put on, how many, um, you know, containers it was in before it got to the, the, the store, not to mention all the, all the pesticides and things like that if you're not buying solely organic. So she recommends in the book, Dr. Cohen, one part white vinegar to four parts water. That sea salt can be used as an abrasive. She also had a recipe for <clears throat> using baking soda as well. And um, you really have to wash your produce, regardless of whether it's, it's organic or not. Uh, you just <clears throat> don't know, you know, even if it's sitting there, you don't know what's been sprayed in the air. You just don't know. So, you know, you're eating it. So you need to wash it. Um, you need to submerse it and wash it and, and be careful with that. And you'll see, I mean, you'll be amazed to see, you know, the, the water that's used is, is often very dirty. Um, if obviously you can't afford to buy solely organic, you should know the vegetables and fruits that are bad. Uh, it's called the dirty dozen and the clean 15. I was going to put them in here, but I didn't have a uh, time tonight, unfortunately, but you just type in dirty dozen, certainly things like celery and um, strawberries are often at the top of the list when it comes to, um, to the dirty dozen. And there's certain um, things that, that are usually okay. If you buy them, um, you know, not organic. When it comes to grilling, unfortunately, you know, when you grill fats, you, you do get toxins formed. Um, but if you really spice it up, you put a lot of spices, these sort of act almost, you can almost think of them as like antioxidants in a sense that sort of prevent that from happening. So marinades and spices are really great if you're going to be grilling meats. And then seafood, of course, you know about mercury. So the mnemonic smash has been used, which is, uh, you know, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. Uh, those are the ones that are mostly low, low in, um, in mercury. And a note about fat. Um, I don't remember why I put a note about fat. I think it has something to, oh, I know why. Um, so in animals, unfortunately, there is a situation where, you know, unfortunately, a fair amount of fat soluble toxins are stored in the fat. So probably, you know, free range, you know, grass fed, you know, animals probably have less of the toxins, but it's hard to say really. So you do have to be cognizant, just aware of, of the fact that, you know, there is going to be, especially if it's in a, you know, conventionally just meat that you bought at the store from some concentrated animal feedlot or is going to have the fat is there's going to be a lot of toxins in the fat because it stores in the fat. So uh, that's something to be aware of. I know I'm making it sound like everything is terrible, but it really isn't. Again, the key is to get your lifestyle in order and to make, you know, small, slow changes to, to just be conscious of it. Now, you know, some of these things, you know, over time, slowly incorporate these, these changes into, into your, into your um, lifestyle. Changes in water, chemicals in water, ewg.org, mentioning it again, you can put in your, your zip code and look at your local water uh, source. And I live in an area in Miami that has very clean water, but um, there's still things in it uh, that are that are a little bit unusual. And I have a tabletop uh, reverse osmosis filter called an AquaTrue. I've, I've had one for many years and um, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but there are lots of ways of making sure your water is clean. Um, when it comes to municipal water sources, you're not going to get an infectious disease. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's really a success of modern life that we are, that we can turn on the faucet and, and drink water and not get, not get sick. But unfortunately there are a fair number of chemicals. Um, and of course, things like Flint, Michigan, where, where lead was in the water, um, you want to go to ewg.org and just see what your water's like. And then think about getting a reverse osmosis type of water uh, machine, 
most of the reverse osmosis machines are built underneath the cabinet in the sink. Uh, I think it's a really, I think, I think it pays for itself because I mean, bottled water, I mean, again, just go back 30 years, you know, there was no bottled water. And someone said to 30, 40 years there, I don't know when it goes back to, but if someone said to you, you know, if someone came, if you were like in business and someone came to you with the idea that I'm going to sell bottled water years ago, people would have laughed at you. Like, what, what are you talking about? Well, who's going to buy a, a bottle of water now? Obviously, this has become a feature of modern life. And who knows where that bottle has, has it been stored in heat? How long has it been on the, on the shelf? You know, has the sun been in there? I mean, all of you have probably tasted water that just tasted off, just tasted from the plastic. So the concept of bottled water is a mess, a real mess. Now, could there be, so there, of course, I've had bottled water and there are situations when I drink bottled water, but at home, I never buy bottled water. Um, I sometimes will buy, uh, you know, like uh, some Perrier or something in glass, some sparkling water uh, on occasion. But you save an enormous amount of money if you buy, say, the like the AquaTrue machine that I have. I, I don't have to buy water, and it always comes out great. And it's uh, <clears throat> something I recommend. So I'm not going to spend uh, much time, more time on that. Chemicals in the air, uh, you know, I think by now you can see that with all the chemicals we've discussed, your air could also be a concern. Uh, of course, smoking, and there is a difference between first, first-hand smoke, second-hand smoke, third-hand smoke, which is, you know, like chemicals that get onto, get onto clothes and such. All these are, all these are toxic. Second-hand smoke is different than first-hand smoke, believe it or not. When you inhale the smoke, um, there's sort of a process that takes place. And then when the smoke is exhaled, it actually has different features than the, the smoke that's actually been inhaled. <clears throat> inhaled. And, you know, if you're susceptible, uh, you have some genetic susceptibilities as well as lifestyle sus susceptibilities, that secondhand smoke can be very toxic for you. We've all heard about radon. There, there's a fair amount of regulation about that. Of course, mold, carbon monoxide, uh, furnishings, We'll get into that in just a moment. Dry clean clothes, you should take the plastic off and let them air out um, as best as you can before ideally you would leave them outside for a little bit just to, to off gas because the chemicals from, from the dry cleaning. Same with furnishing. We spoke about vinyl floors. Um, if you have a vacuum, it should have a HEPA filter in it because oftentimes vacuums are just spewing things up. And again, all, I'm, all this is sounding, for, for someone who hasn't heard all this stuff, it sounds like you're being assaulted on, on every angle. And I don't want you to make, make you feel that way. Uh, just again, this is something just slowly over time. Now that you know, you can, you can make your life a lot more natural um, and closer to the way it was supposed to be by being conscious of these things. So vacuum should have a HEPA filter. Otherwise, it's just spewing um, some of the dust around. So just removing your shoes at the door for obvious reasons. Maybe consider getting an air filter. And plants, get, get plants. NASA did a study in the, I think in the early 60s with a, a whole bunch of plants to be able to come up with um, plants that would sort of detoxify the environment. And there's, you can go on and Google what these plants are. There's like 10 or 15 of these plants that have been shown to, to filter the air very, very well. And you know, it's, it's also just healthy to have something living around you. And um, I of course recommend having, having plants, uh, plants at home. Personal care products. Um, so, I had some slight disagreements with the author on this. Of course, I have a lot of experience counseling people in, in dermatology for personal care products. Uh, and there are lots of, of, of what are called formaldehyde releasers in personal care products. And we often see them in our practices because we see people who become allergic to, to formaldehyde, these formaldehyde releasers. And therefore you have to give people a list of, of a whole bunch of 
chemicals that release this formaldehyde. And then they have to go back and they have to look on all their personal care products to see which ones they may be allergic, <clears throat> allergic to. Um, there's a fair number of them in a lot of the chemical products that you're using. EWG, again, is a very good resource. Uh, now, they rank things in, you know, I, th I think it's, I'm, I think it's like a, giving it like an A plus, that sort of thing through, through an F. You don't necessarily have to get an A plus, just again, slowly work your way up, you know, um, avoid fragrances, avoid antimicrobial soaps. Uh, again, a, a reason to avoid fragrances. These are also, these are chemicals that, that are brand new. People often react to them. Uh, who have sensitive skin, uh, but they also have things in them that are not, not that friendly, let's say. Antimicrobial soaps make, really make very little sense for most people. Uh, the reason being that you wanna have a healthy microbiome. You wanna have a healthy skin biome. You know, we have natural bacteria on our skin. We don't wanna kill everything. Uh, we don't wanna over sterilize things. That's not healthy. So we should avoid antimicrobial soaps. And some of the, some of the, antimicrobial substances are not are toxic in and of themselves, not just the fact that they're affecting your, your overall microbiome. And next is using sunblocks and not sunscreens. You won't really want to use a difference between a sunblock and a sunscreen is a sunscreen, a sunblock works by light coming and then bouncing off the skin. So we're talking about zinc and titanium, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Sunscreens are chemicals that basically absorb the light and convert it into heat. And these chemicals are really new. They're, they're new. And some of them have some endocrine disrupting um, properties to them. And they also make you hotter than, than sunblock because they're creating heat, whereas sunblock is reflecting. So you want to get a sunblock that doesn't have a whole lot of other ingredients in it besides zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. I uh, don't use sunscreen with an insect repellent. Uh, the reason being that insect repellents bind to the skin. And so if you're continually, and they last in your skin for quite a bit of time. So if you're continually using, there are very few of these products around because of this, um, because of this, that if you're continually adding sunscreen, the sunscreen washes off, but you're continuing to get a buildup of the insect repellent in the skin and get to very toxic levels if you're applying this over and over again. And don't use fabric softeners or dryer sheets. These are chemical products meant to fat soften and, you know, in your sheets um, that for people who, as an example, have sensitive skin or atopic dermatitis eczema. These are some of the things that, that also have an effect on, on the oil barrier of your skin. They're just chemicals that sh your skin shouldn't be in touch with. Uh, they do, look, they make things nice for people. Uh, people love dryer sheets and fabric softeners, but unfortunately they are not healthy. These are chemicals that need to be added to get this sort of effect, unfortunately. Uh, home furnishings. You know, I sometimes feel while I'm going through some of these classes that I'm overloading as we go through this, but so we'll, we'll go through these pretty fast. Um, I, I, mean, I noticed that no one has left, so, so you must be finding it somewhat interesting or you would have left an hour ago. Um, so I'm just gonna push ahead, even though I feel like I'm overloading you. All right, so flame retardants. So th there was a very interesting section of the book where she talked about flame retardants, something that I really, I knew it was toxic, but didn't really understand the story. They were created, I don't remember the exact year. It was, I think in the fifties, um, but they were designed to allow people to get out of the house with more time. Uh, it was estimated like 12 seconds before it actually caught, caught on fire. Um, the utility of that is, is in question, uh, but unfortunately it, it has, you know, it, the utility of it is questioned, not because they don't necessarily do that, but because the majority of um, fires, I believe we mentioned, is have, has to do with, with um, cigarettes and such. But anyway, uh, unfortunately, it's put into a whole host of things now. So people are getting it in clothing. It's been found in 97% of people when they're tested. Uh, dust, it's been found in, in uh, breast milk. Uh, it's toxic. So what do you do about it? 
similar to what we've spoken about before, where we spoke about the wrinkle-free, avoid wrinkle-free clothes, of course, wash them before you use them, avoid stain guard fabrics. Uh, so stain guard, wrinkle-free, you know, fabric softeners, dryer sheets, all these things are, are made with chemicals. Just remember that. Uh, stick to glass and metal home goods and decor if you can. And then there are a whole host of resources. Again, another reason why I always recommend that you buy the, buy the book uh, that I'm mentioning, which again, to review, is called Non-Toxic Guide to Living a, a Healthy in a Chemical World by Dr. Cohen. Um, GreenGuard, UL.com, Global Standard or Green Seal, these sorts of things, these sorts of organizations can help you. Uh, there are um, like tags as well that you can look on furniture and such. Uh, if it has flame, flame retardant in it and there's certain codes you can find to see if they don't, uh, these sorts of things, just something to be, be aware of. And radiation, uh, electromagnetic radiation. So I'm not gonna go into detail with it. The data is conflicting, but what's interesting is uh, that when you look at studies that were not sponsored by, by you know, cell phone companies and companies that have an interest, the data was that they don't cause anything. If you look at um, data from people who are not affiliated, then it does show that there are some, some problems. Uh, there have been several books written and probably, probably at some point in time, I will review one of those books. Uh, I would say that uh, at a, at a trade show, I met a, a, a scientist from who used to work at Bell Labs who created a company called Defender Shield, which makes cases for, for cell phones and such. And I, sp I spoke to him for like an hour and I was fairly impressed with the data that he presented to me. Um, and he, he really was impressive, so much so that I, I feel like there probably is a problem with, with um, putting cell phones close to your body. And you probably should use the, you should use, you know, the speakerphone and stay at a distance. <clears throat> I mean, you know, it, the, the thing with, with the, um, radiation, electromagnetic radiation is that it falls off exponentially, meaning, meaning that, you know, each time you go, it drops dramatically. So the difference between here and here can be dramatic, absolutely dramatic. So just needs to be a little bit of a distance away. I do recommend people not leave a, a cell phone near their head when they're sleeping uh, on the on the cabinet next next to the the bed thing next to the next to the bed. Um, I do recommend that people avoid that uh, or turn their phone onto onto uh, Wi-Fi or airplane mode or something of of that sort. But um, I think it deserves like a full review and I haven't really done that full review, but when I do, I, I'll do an entire class on that. So what about detox? And this will go very, very fast because we've spoken about it many, many times. And really it's just healthy lifestyle advice. As I said, avoid as best as possible. Try to make your life simpler and not use chemicals. Um, buy the book and try some of those home cleaning agents that she has recipes for. And she has got good food recipes in the book too. As I said, make it yourself. Now, EWG again is your friend. Uh, it's going, the first time you go there, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, come on. It seems to be excessive. And I've said this before and I'll say it again, that our, you know, your statistic are you statistically going to get really sick from, from something in your environment? Well, maybe you're just fine and you're not, and you have the resilience that you don't have to worry about it. I don't think that's the biggest issue. I think the biggest issue is, is it creating an environment, a sacred space in your home that is as natural as you possibly can be. And I think there's a value also to buying products that are trying their best to avoid these sorts of things. I think just for the overall, for your overall sacred space of a home and for the world that we live in, it just makes sense to me to try to slowly uh, over time reduce the amount of chemical exposure you have. Your diet, of course, again, you should be eating those cruciferous vegetables. 
Um, and something that I didn't mention, but it, is that it shifts the ratio to good estrogen metabolites. In other words, if you're having like horm some hormonal irregularities, eating a lot of cruciferous vegetables can be really, really helpful. Uh, we spoke about getting iodine per day, uh, every day uh, in supplement form, because it's difficult to get in diet these days, uh, making sure you have clean water, fasting, but with fiber, you know, if you lose an enormous amount of weight quickly, your body releases the fat, uh, sorry, releases the chemicals that are stored in the fat. And you want to be able to bind that, you know, then it goes to your, goes to your liver and into your gallbladder and out into your in, intestine. And if you don't have fiber there, it's just going to be reabsorbed. And, you know, people can feel very, very sick if they get this release of fat, sorry, the release of toxins in the fat from fat loss, and then recirculation of, of the toxins, people can actually feel very sick when they, when they fast and lose a lot of weight. That's why I'm a big fan of biological fasting, which is a reduced calorie diet for five days where you get the benefits of, um, you get the benefits of the fast without having to completely avoid food. And of course, on the Miracle Noodle site, we, I have a program called the Body Mastery Method, which, which is a overall lifestyle modification program for people. And of course, uh, it incorporates a, a food kit uh, five days each month that is basically going to give you the benefits of fasting, which includes, of course, weight, weight loss and those sorts of things. Um, and if you're interested in that, by the way, we're doing, um, go over to, to miraclemoodle.com and type in body mastery method. And you'll see that there's uh, up until New Year's, there's a uh, special on that. So something to consider. Exercise, you wanna sweat, sweat gets rid of some toxins and it also helps to detoxify because of blood flow. So no, there's no surprise there that if your blood flow is moving around and, and everything's going well, that you're going to be able to detoxify properly. If, if you're not moving around, uh, you're gonna, your body's just not healthy and is, things are not flowing. And if things are not flowing, you're going to be um, not optimally healthy. Sauna, if, you, if your doctor approves, can be very, very beneficial. The same reason, get, the sweat can, can be very good for you. And then sleep. Sleep is, is you know, uh, important. One of the reasons it's important is because your body has these cycles, rest and recharge. And when you sleep, when you ship, shift into sort of the recharge state, there's also some detoxification that goes on. It's another reason why if you're chronically eating, your body can't really go into that state. So it's important to, you know, at least have 12 hours before your last meal and your first meal of the next day, just to give your body the ability to shift into, into that state to be able to, to do what it's supposed to do, which is rest, recharge, detoxify. Um, and that, that's also very, very important. So I hope I didn't overwhelm you. Again, I'm looking at the number of people that are here and it, it hasn't changed, which is fabulous. And at least I hope it means that you found value in tonight's class, even though I feel like I bombarded you with um, a, the sky is falling kind of, kind of talk. Um, but I would recommend, uh, again, to buy the book, Non-Toxic, Guide to Living Healthy in a Chemical World. I've never met the doctor, but um, I, I did enjoy the book. And, you know, again, I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen. You want to just get to a situation where, you know, it sort of just it came to me now that your environment should feel like a, a sacred space. And that sacred space should be as clean as possible. Um, and you can do that through understanding all the things that we spoke about tonight. So um, I wish everyone a very healthy uh, and loving Thanksgiving with your family. And uh, as always, I enjoy these tremendously. I, I definitely enjoy them more than, I bet I enjoy them more than you, you enjoy them. So I appreciate your attendance and uh, do, uh, do get, I, I get an enormous amount of value from doing these myself. Uh, so, so thank you for that and for your attendance. And next week we'll be talking about the nine factors that cause weight gain. It's not necessarily a class about weight loss, but it is a class about understanding what is it that we do that puts us in a situation where our body wants to 
put on weight. And there are nine factors. Um, and we're going to go through all those nine. And I think you'll find it very interesting because again, it's going to give you insight and looking at the body through the lens of, of an idea, the lens of, well, what puts your body in the state of weight gain? And when you can understand all those factors, it gives you an overall idea about keeping your body healthy and at an optimal weight. Um, thinking, And you'll see how it crosses a whole span of different parts of your body, looking at it from hormonal and metabolic um, way. It gives you a general understanding overall of, of the human body. So again, I wish everyone a great Thanksgiving. Um, um, I hope you enjoyed tonight's class and uh, I'll see you next week. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.